This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studio, this is The Ramsey Show. It's where America hangs out to have a conversation about life. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by my colleague, Dr. John Deloney. We're together in the studio for you this hour. It is a free phone call. 888-825-5225. 888-825-5225. Reminder. Some of the questions you've got are pretty deep, pretty sticky, sometimes kind of messy, and we will protect your name and location if that's something that will give you the courage to call us. John and I love teaming up. It's always fun when we get together, and and uh, we'll take our specialties, John, of course, and relationships and the, the mental health space, and, and then me in the work space. Work and life are inextricably connected. And a lot of the junk you're dealing with with relationships has got a work cost. So John and I always love it. We can kind of tackle those together. We'll take those calls today. If somebody's really hurting, really confused, you got some emotions you want to deal with, uh, we're here for you. 888-825-5225. Doc, it's always fun when we're together. You ready to rock? Let's do it, man. I mean, I know the answer to that question. (laughs) I fully expected I I needed the rocker signal. You didn't give it to me. I'm low-key You're very chill today. We're going to do it. That's right. Did you just take some medication? Yeah. Okay. No, not at all. Okay, cool. (laughs) Let's go north of the border, Toronto, Canada. Dylan joins us there. Dylan, how can we help? Hi. I uh, so I have just over a quarter million dollars of consumer debt on top of two houses that I own. Whoa. Um, a rental and my primary residence. Um, and I get two hundred fifty thousand dollars of consumer debt. Yes. Yeah. And then what is um, what is that debt? How'd you get it? Um, so I bought a I bought a property, um, and then the renovations cost one hundred fifty thousand dollars, just over, um, and then taxes um, that I haven't paid for my my business um, that are fifty thousand dollars, and then the rest just sort of things here and there. So the two houses you mentioned, they're a part of this two hundred fifty thousand. No, no, no. The house, the, the rehab one on one of the houses is. is. Okay. Exactly. All right. So yeah. let me ask yeah. a follow up here. So, uh, 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 is one of the houses paid off? What's the debt on the houses, if any? Yeah. So the one I owe, uh, or I own, sorry, fifty fifty um, with my dad, and that one um, we owe. Well, I my portion is two hundred seventy seven thousand, and then the other one is six hundred seventy thousand that I owe. So you're a million dollars in hawk. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to make sure that, we're dealing with. My, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're not two hundred fifty thousand dollars. A million in debt. dollars in the hole. You're a million plus in the hole. Leveraged out. All right. So, what's your question? So my question is, um, obviously, I'm going to be selling my um, everything. My rental Good. property. Everything. Good. Uh, yeah. so, so then what? Um, I'm wondering, with the debt snowball, should I pay off? Um, because my I have smaller debts uh, on line of credits. Should I pay them off first? Because they're smaller, or my parents, who I owe a hundred thousand each, do the debt snowball. Parents, the the debt to the parents is is in the snowball. Yeah, who cares? The one the one caveat here is you said you owed fifty thousand dollars, and I'm ignorant here in the U.S. It's IRS. What is it in Canada? The CRA. But I think, yeah, I figured that one goes first. Yeah, the the one you want to roll out. That's the only time we get out of the baby steps is if you're in hawk to the government because they're going to take everything else from you too. How much is the house worth, the, the rental, the one you owe 600000 on? Uh, the rental is worth uh, 800000 The market's been uh, kind to us that way. Okay. Um, and then... Sell it today. I, I Sell guess, it this afternoon. Tell your dad we're selling this house. Will he do yeah, it? That's the plan. Uh, I think so, yeah, because he's incurred some debt in our uh, recent renovations. How much it. is the other house worth? Uh, the other house is... Um, Probably worth about nine hundred. Um, what do you owe on that then, one? Six seventy-five. So, uh, Six seventy. Are, Are you, you married? Uh, I have a partner. Yeah. Okay. Do you have uh, kids? Mm, no. Okay. How old are you? I'm twenty-six. Okay. If I'm you, let me let me back it up. If you're my son or you're my best friend, and you come to me and you're twenty-six, and you tell me what you're telling me, I would tell you to sell. 
your primary residence, your million dollar residence. Mm -hmm. I would tell you to get with your dad and sell that thing. Get squared up with the government. Get squared up with all of your debts. Have zero. Have some cash. You'll end up with some cash here if you do this right. And yep. either buy a small home that you can actually afford based on the income you produce from your business, by the way, which is a business that pays taxes from now on, or rent for a year or two and just get your bearings back. You are, Man, you are underwater. You know that though, right? 100%. Yeah, are you, that's are right. You, are you just stressed out of your mind? Yeah. I don't know how you breathe. Absolutely. Okay, then. Yeah. John's right. I, I couldn't agree more. I would have said the same thing. Because of the, not just the financial freedom, but can I just throw the emotional freedom in this? I mean, dude, which they're, they're obviously tied together, but this isn't just a numbers play. Right. This is some health and your future. And and uh, if you can fund that emergency fund and then save up for a little bit while and rent, and then you guys oh, buy uh, again, I mean, hey, that that's the play. Yeah, dude. You're... Your relationship with your dad gets better. Relationship with your partner gets better. Yeah. Relationships everywhere get better. Dude, you're able to breathe. What business do you have? Uh, funnily enough, I'm a realtor. <laughs> <laughs> well, then here's the other thing. You know, you know that you can make up ground quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, dude. I I don't even think this is even up for vote. No. I mean, well, at the end of the day, you're voting. John and I are consulting. Yeah, I would right. sell everything. Hey, we're talking fresh start. Imagine how that would feel. The, at January 1st, 2022, you could be out of a million dollars in debt, have a new smaller place that you can take care of, and you will be able to sleep the whole night without popping awake at 3 a.m. How does that sound? It sounds much better. <laughs> yes, yes, right. yes, yes. So do it. Dude, yes. Do it. Yes, do it, do it, do it, do it. Man, it, can, it gets... It, <sighs> I, you just look at the the Instagram or you look at the computer, you look at whatever's on TV and you just think, oh, that's the path. Yeah. And I can just borrow my way to, and man, what a blessing. We talk to people who are 60 having this, oh crap moment in the middle of the night. He's 26, man. He's got his whole life ahead of him. Oh, and we're talking about being a multimillionaire as a result of this too. Absolutely. Doing it the right way and being yeah. able to be a multimillionaire yeah. and breathe at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. And I love, he's got the income potential yeah. with being a realtor. Uh, I'd be going bananas because you could fast forward all of everything. I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, John, it's uh, that time of the year. A few wow. in a few weeks, we're going to be doing what I think is I think one of the great shows of all time yeah. in the history of the Ramsey show. It's our special giving edition of the Ramsey show. We want to hear your stories from you about how you have paid it forward and given generously to others. Maybe you've tipped a waitress. Uh, maybe you bought Thanksgiving dinner. Maybe you bought Christmas for some family that needed it. Maybe you've been on the receiving end of an unbelievable gift or blessing. Go to RamseySolutions.com slash ask. That's RamseySolutions.com slash ask and put giving in the subject line. Share your story. It's going to touch so many other people. We'd love for you to be a part of this very special show. All right, don't go anywhere. More of The Ramsey Show coming right up. Life is full of firsts. First and longest serving Christian health cost sharing ministry, CHM has shared medical expenses for its members since 1981. We believe you should have the freedom to focus on your health while being supported by a community of believers, giving you the opportunity to create many more firsts. America, you have joined the conversation here on The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman. 
He is Dr. John Deloney. We're taking your calls about your life, your money, your relationships, your work. They're all connected, aren't they? So we're here to help you. The phone number to jump in is 888-825-5225, 888 888- 825-5225. Russell joins us now in Dallas, Texas. Russell, how can we help? How are we doing today, guys? Well, I'm living the dream, and uh, we're here for you. So what's going on? Perfect. Perfect. Well, I uh, have developed some clarity lately that's really got me energized. I love my job, love my life, really. And I've decided that the thing that really speaks to me in my work is being able to coach people and train people. Mm -hmm. And you and Dr. Deloney, who, by the way, I'm a graduate of ACU, and I was there when uh, Dr. Deloney was there, so go Wildcats. Okay, well, let's not drive drive (laughs) by that. Did you know him, and do you have some damaging information that you could reveal to James after the segment? Um, Yeah, I personally don't know him, but my wife took his mom's class. Oh, great. That feels all kinds of yuck right there. Yeah, it's just getting (laughs) grosser by the second, Russell. (laughs) Listen, I need this job. I haven't paid my house off yet. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Russell, please, please, we'd like you to sign an NDA after the uh, show (laughs) today. Happy Uh, to do it. All right, so so you're excited. Uh, You love your job, but. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, all I want to know is I see you guys as leaders in the space that. I want to go into someday. Like, I want to be a coach. I'm insufferably positive. It's one of my spiritual gifts. <laughs> I listen to personal and professional development stuff for fun. You guys, Horst Schultz, Andy Stanley, Donald Miller, Jim Witten. Like, it's just my thing. I love it. And so I'm seeing an opportunity in my job where I can go into that space and kind of step more into there rather than, like, admin stuff. Um, and so being at this point with my newfound clarity and, you know, excitement about what I have to do, I just want to know what you guys would do um, if you could talk to your, I'm 30, if you could talk to your 30-year-old self about your current job, because you guys are doing what I'd love to do someday, what would you say? What advice do you guys have? Well, I don't I don't think that's the question you want from us. I don't think you want us to answer that. <laughs> I think you want us okay. to answer uh, how do you get into that type of coaching role. Is that what I'm understanding? That's definitely part of it. I mean, yeah, yeah. for well, sure. So you're an admin assistant or you're in operations type work right now? Is that what I'm understanding? No, forgive me. I'm in sales. You're in um, sales, but okay. a lot of it's just like a lot of it is just like computer work. It's looking right. at quotes, moving on to the next thing. It's not face to face in front of people. Okay, so, so so I'll partially answer the question. If I could talk to my 30 year old self, and I knew that I was going to do what I'm doing now, uh, mm. which at the time I didn't. That's why I do what I do now, right? I thought I was heading down mm. a different track. Uh, I would delineate the specifics uh, as follows: Do I okay. want to coach, speak, write? Do I want to do counseling? And then uh, of those areas, and I'm trying to pull out your list, uh, who is it that I want to coach or counsel or speak to or write to? What problem Mm -hmm. or desire do they have? And then how do I want to come about helping them get that? That's a... That's that's what I would tell my 30-year-old self because I think you got to understand that and really learn it before you just go, well, I want to coach or I want to do what you guys do. John and I do what we do because of the problems we want to solve. Right. And I think that's mm-hmm. first and foremost. John, anything you'd add to that? Yeah, the thing I would add, man, is my 30-year-old self, and you can go back and ask some of our your classmates that were around me. Mm. Dude, that guy was hell-bent on being the leader of a thing, mm. being at the top mm-hmm. of a thing. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Being around influencers and being around presidents and doing a, and writing and getting published. It was all of these external things. And what I would tell my 30-year-old self is, Brother, you need a decade of being in the middle of the night in hospitals mm-hmm. with people sitting behind closed doors, helping marriages fall apart. You need to do that work for 10 years before you have any business giving other people wisdom on how they can make mm-hmm. decisions. And so a, a, a mantra I give myself is find the learning anywhere you are. So if you're grinding out as a salesman right now while you're going to, and Ken's going to walk you through the steps, while you start leaning into what coaching is going to look like, make sure you're keeping close notes of what you're experiencing, what the people you're calling on are experiencing. Talk to them about their families. When you're trying to sell something to an executive somewhere, talk to them about the job they're in, what they love about it, what they don't. That A, that's going to help your sell, sales. B, it's going to help you develop relationships. And C, you're going to get to learn. It's the proximity. You're going to get to learn how this job actually works, the one that you actually want to do someday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Russell, do you know who you want to coach or counsel? Yeah, I'd like to do executive. I'd like to do executive kind of business development 
stuff. But like you said earlier, it's all kind of intertwined. So you're correct. I do need to delineate and specify yep. before I just attack. Well, everything. you're close, though. So you, I think you have a little bit more homework in stage one. So I teach this mm-hmm. through seven stages. How do you how do you do what you were born to do and experience tremendous meaning? Stage one is get clear. I think you're 90 percent clear. I think you got to dive into, okay, I want to help business leaders. I want to mentor them. Maybe I want to walk with them and be an accountability partner. I mean, who knows? you got to kind of delineate that a little bit further by going through what's the problem that an uh, executive has that I most get excited about solving. I think if you get into that one right there and you get some clarity there, that's really huge. Now you go, okay, i got to get qualified. you got to do some homework. What are the qualifications in the industry in spa- yeah. first? And then second, like John said, I want to see you actually lead a team and lead maybe <laughs> yeah. a uh, division or two you before can't we coach start coaching business people. leaders. Unless you've been a business leader, know that's what, what's going on there, right? Yeah. Right, yeah. right. It, it's, like the marketing, it's like the marketing professor at, at college who's actually never had to market anything. They go. just studied theory. Theory's great. Mm-hmm. But at some point, theory must meet brick and Reality. mortar. Yeah. And, yeah. and so uh, I think those are the steps steps for you is to actually begin to lead and uh, and learn how to lead. Now, here's the good news, Ross. I want to encourage you on something. You've been following. And, and learning how to follow is vital to learning how to lead. Uh, but I do think if you're going to coach leaders, I think you need to understand the moccasins that they put on. Yeah. And what, what's it like yeah. to walk in their shoes, to deal with that? I think that's really, really important. Yeah, I'll never forget. I, I have a several close buddies who were had positions that I wanted in universities and then I finally got one and it was a few months in and I realized oh they earn that money mm-hmm. but there's a you sleep differently when the whole thing rests on you right when you, and you it's easy to see that title and that position but there I, I wouldn't have been half as good at helping walk alongside people had I not laid in bed at night with that weight on my own chest. It's hundred percent. Right. Or I know what it's like to be sitting through dinner and be completely not present because that's my right. head's back at the office. Whatever. Oh. So you've got to spend a season in, in that time. Yeah. Um, that's why, like, I mean, you walk the journey. I know what from, it's like to lay awake at 3 a.m. and think that I wasted my life. There you go. I'm not doing something that fires me up during the day. Yes. And then, and then I know what it's like to go. Seven I have years no of grinding idea it out. to go. Yeah. And yeah. then figure out what I think it is. Yep. Confirm it. And then go, now what? Yeah. Right? And then really suck at it and not get much opportunity for a while. He's like, so that's the point. I don't think you need a ton of experience to actually lead somebody, but I do think you need a good amount of experience to coach somebody who's leading. There's the difference. That's right. And we tell all the time, Dave talks to, is one of the only CEOs, if not the only CEO in the United States that... Spends three hours a day with a frontline customer, yeah. right? Think how different Burger King would be if the CEO took lunch orders every day, five days a week. But the Andy Stanleys of the world and the John Maxwell of the world, they sat with people for years and years and years, which gives them the wisdom too. It's not just a bunch of theories and a bunch of books that they read, right? Yeah. You got time for a quick uh, social media question? Real quick. Let's see. Real fast. <laughs> How can I move on from a broken friendship and business relationship with my sister-in-law? We're still around each other, and she doesn't seem sorry for what she's caused. Oh, man. Uh, at some point, if somebody, if you're in a relationship with somebody and you're going to be around them, and that's just going to be life, I always suggest two things. Number one, you've got to go have the, an upfront conversation. And just call is what is, and that it's that unspoken secret stuff that causes drama, and um, that that uh, true conversation will cause drama too. But at least it's out on the open. Here's where everybody is. And number two, you have to decide every day to set it down. I am not going to carry my drama into this Christmas event. I'm not going to carry my drama into this thing. I don't like her. She doesn't like me partridge in a pear tree i'm gonna go about being a respectful adult and move on with my life yeah. i'm not gonna carry that yeah i'm not you, gonna give her that power control. over my life yeah. there it is because you can't control how she's no. gonna react it's driving you bananas but but by by letting her speak into my soul i'm giving her permission to ruin my that's a what a waste of a life mm. cheer up man oh there it is cheer folks. Up. and one quick answer how to never have tension at thanksgiving again <laughs> you just solved it it's that instant uncle larry it's his fault it will fall it's fails. always his fault go to go to go out to eat somewhere on thanksgiving You'll there be. it is that works too all right don't go anywhere he is dr john deloney i'm ken coleman and this is the ramsey show
If you're looking for ways to update your home without blowing the budget, I've got it. For years, I've been telling you about our friends at Blinds.com. Blinds.com makes it simple to shop top quality blinds, shades, and interior shutters from home with easy online ordering and free shipping. With Blinds.com, there's no need to renovate your entire home. Just change out what's on your windows with upscale choices like faux wood blinds, cellular, and roller shades or even outdoor shades. Plus, Blinds.com guarantees the perfect fit, whether you do it yourself or you have them measure and install everything for you. Shop their latest looks and see how much you can save at Blinds.com today. The easy and affordable way to make your home more beautiful is Blinds.com. Show. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by my colleague, Dr. John Deloney. We're taking your calls about life. 888-825-5225 is the phone number to jump in. 888-825-5225. And uh, I look across in the lobby and I see Adam and Vicki. They're on the debt-free stage. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Thank, Thank you. you. So I guess since you're standing there, you're here to do a debt-free scream. Yes, sir. Yeah. See how sharp I am? Very, very Ken, few Ken things get by Ken was in honors me. classes. <laughs> Ken was in honors classes. So true. Well, where are you guys from? Raleigh, North Carolina. Raleigh. All right. And uh, let's hear the story. How much debt did you pay off? Uh, we paid off uh, $156,105. Whoa. Wow. How long did that take? 18 months. 18 <laughs> months? Wow. Whoa. Okay, what do you guys, uh, tell me the range of income, then we'll figure out what you do. What uh, range of income? 280000 to 305000 Whoa. We're not playing around. What do you guys do for a living? Real estate quality assurance. And I work in enterprise risk. Nice. So I always love to hear the story here. 280 to 305. What was the uh, cause for the bump? Um, God is good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I really like that. I'm going to press you. I mean, was it just a natural raise? Did you go after a promotion? What happened? Uh, just natural. Natural stuff. Increase, yeah. Great. Fantastic. All right. Uh, and uh, 18 months ago, you guys decided we're going to get after this. What, what, what spurred this on? Well, for the next 30 minutes, I would like to talk about <laughs> yes. the, the precursor to the story. No, the, the, it really started, um, it, we were on, on the show in 2015. Um, oh, wow. So we are repeat uh, uh, screamers. Um, and it, we had paid off $89,775 uh, in 2015. Oh. And that was credit card debt and cars. And I was a personal financial wrecking ball. <laughs> and my wife uh, was patient and loving and kind. And, and uh, the Dave Ramsey teaching helped us get through that. And Wait so a minute. We, so is this your house? Yeah, this is yeah. our house. Oh, baby. we're back yeah. for the house. All right. Yes. So we, wow. we got done with all that debt, and we just went straight into uh, let's let's save money, um, and uh, we did that. And then uh, my wife said, "Hey, hon, um, I'd like to pay off the house too." And I thought, "Is this ever going to end?" <laughs> so no. In June of 2020, we pivoted to the house, and we just went gazelle intense, and you know, let's uh, let's knock it out. Let's not have that debt anymore. And so I am we longed for this day to come here with the mortgage satisfaction notice filed at the wow. courthouse and say we're totally debt wow, free. Wow, that so. is so fantastic. Yeah. Wow, that is really cool. How does that feel? Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have you received the first paycheck where you didn't have to pay your mortgage yet? Yes. How does that feel when all that money deposits and you realize, oh, we can just do whatever we want to with this? Yeah, we're still doing our budgets though, so... We're, we're being good. <laughs> yeah, we still have goals, and I think that was another important message for us is, you know, not losing that momentum. So, w w you know, we focus a lot on that, that nasty consumer debt, but it really feels good not to owe anybody anything sure, and man. own all your own money and not rent it. And so, um, 
it's exciting because now those that baby step seven, the building wealth and the giving, now now seems so much more fun. Yeah. Okay, so the question that pops up for me is, how was Gazelle Intense different, if at all, when we just paid off the house? So having paid off all other consumer debt prior, doing your debt-free scream, then it's like, let's do this. Was there any any different things that you'd done it once before? It's kind of like being a millionaire a second time over. Curious. What's the answer to that? So, uh, you know what? The first one felt good because uh, it, it, I felt a lot of guilt. Um, I had accumulated a lot of debt. I had squandered mm -hmm. a lot of income. And, and so that was a guilt release moment. This is, people don't feel as guilty about mortgage debt, but this feels so good because it's like it's all gone now. Yeah. It's all gone. Um, it, we're two, two people with no college degrees yeah. um, who scratching through life, and we don't owe anybody anything anymore. And now we can get to that generous level uh, that we want to be at. And that's exciting because that's more, we feel more of what God's called us to do. We can now financially fund. And so... Um, uh, this this feels this feels great, and we've got some great friends um, that have joined us, uh, that have walked this journey with us, and uh, are on their own journey. And uh, we have some friends uh, back at home uh, that are in that same position, and we're coming back in July when they're going to celebrate their debt scre debt free scream. So, right. So the the answer is this ever going to end? I don't think it is. You guys are just going to keep no. bringing more people to do debt free screams now. No. That's like your new thing. And when I told our kids, you know, when we we had a whole group together and we did a mortgage burning party, and I. Oh. Oh. threw the mortgage in the fire that's fun um, and it felt great but then it hit me this is a Corvette ZR1 that I could have had huh right <laughs> but <laughs> but it feels so much better to have a house and 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 we own it so I, I wish the people listening could see them mm -hmm. It's, it's almost like you have to be strapped to the stage. <laughs> You're just floating over there. Yeah. Having paid off every single thing you own. Tell me about the journey in your marriage. I know there's a little bit of frustration, a little bit of, come on, a little bit of, do we make $300,000? I can drive a Corvette, for God's sake. Yeah. <laughs> and you, yeah. I mean, that's a lot of money. And there's, it's a different level of, uh, why are we working like this if we're not going to enjoy it? What was that like for your marriage? <laughs> they both looked at each other like, <laughs> no, there's, a there's a pattern going no, on here. No, you say it. <laughs> yeah. She, yes. No, she's emphatic that I do most of the talking. So. Okay. Um, anyways, uh, the, you know, it, it, will you ask me that question again? How, how did this impact your marriage? <laughs> so we've been married 32 years. We got married when I was 19. She was 18. I was in the Marine Corps. We had our pregnant three months later. I mean, we made so many choices that people probably would classify as bad. And then to compound financial mismanagement on top of that. Mm -hmm. uh, but she is uh, a saint mm -hmm. and um, she has been loving and patient and kind through this. She's frugal. I'm an idiot. <laughs> and so she, her, her patience and love helped us get through this. And so that just built our marriage, well, meaning that she was there when I was doing all the dumb stuff. And, and I, she, bet it, I bet if she would she would talk off air she would say that you've been there for her too so man just two incredible rock stars <laughs> yeah. what a what a gift so fun speaking of gifts uh we've got two books for you one is a copy of dave's book total money makeover and that is a gift to you to give to somebody else because you guys are definitely looking for other couples to influence and you've obviously modeled that already uh the second is is dave's new book which comes out in january baby steps millionaires so you can get it right now pre-sell uh, but we're going to give that book to you because you guys are on your way there obviously and you have done it and uh so we're really proud of you so that's a gift to you so you guys ready to go yeah, but You're, I want to say one more thing if well, I can. Well, sure. All right. I want to also shout out to my my kids, my four boys, because they all graduated from college. They all graduated with some student debt, mm -hmm. and they all paid off their student debt within two years of graduation. Wow. They went rice and beans, wow. paid it off, and they lived debt-free lifestyles. Tell us so. their names. 
uh, Chad, Ryan, Cody, and Kyle. Way to go, guys. Way to go, fellas. You did good, Mom and Dad. That is awesome. That's legacy stuff right there. All right, here we go. Adam and Vicki from Raleigh, North Carolina. They paid off $156,000 in 18 months. The house this time around making between two eighty dollars and $305,000. Adam, Vicki, it's your turn. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, two, one. We're, We're totally, totally debt free! <laughs> yeah! I love it. I love it. That's a... Uh that's your kind of style there, the totally, you know, a little oh, yeah, bit yeah. of... A little, bit of <laughs> a little Bill and Ted's actually. Yeah, yeah, totally. I like that. <laughs> what a great story. They're debt-free, except their house. Then they say, let's get after the house. But listen to this. And then they say, let's go back and do another one. But listen, they did something really hard. It took them a long time the yeah. first time. And then any other hard project they go to, go through the rest of their life, they can go, yeah, we can do that. 18 months, we'll do that. That's, That's cool. True. We'll knock it out. And then they're four boys. Oh, man. Seeing mom and dad model the way. That's incredible. That's legacy, man. That's what we all want. Great stuff. What a great couple. All right. Hey, here's some great news. We have more of the Ramsey Show coming up. Don't move. Welcome back, America. You are joining the Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by my colleague, Dr. John Deloney. We're taking your calls this hour about your life. 888-825-5225. 825 5225 Now, uh, I love the old nursery rhymes, the old children's stories, and I think if we were to take a vote of the entire population, John, that the tortoise and the hare would clearly be a top three, top five for sure. We all love it. And it's one of our favorites around here because it really is, uh, I think, the theme of what we teach here at Ramsey Solutions, that slow and steady, like the tortoise, wins the race every time, certainly in money and in your work, in your relationships, every area of your life. And uh, we sometimes, though, we uh, kind of romance the story and we forget why the hare actually didn't win. Because he actually took some time off and took a nap, he just got off the path. He didn't stay on the path and keep moving. He put off what he knew he should do in favor of what he wanted to do. So for all you tortoises out there, we know it's hard to keep pushing, fighting, and hacking away, especially when you see all these other hares quitting jobs, deferring student loan payments, and financing fancy stuff. So if you'd like to get a boost at this time of year, We'd like you to take part of a Ramsey Christmas cash giveaway. This year, we're giving away up to $5,000. You can enter at RamseySolutions.com slash giveaway. That's RamseySolutions.com slash giveaway. And you can keep entering every day to increase your chances of winning. And if you need an extra dose of motivation just in time for the new year, uh, our team is featuring a new deal every day this week. So today only, when you buy, oh, that says me. My book, Hey-o. From Paycheck to Purpose for just 20 bucks, you'll get the career assessment for free. This is a great gift for somebody who's looking at new year, new career. We're just giving so, that away? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. I, I need a new pair of shoes, so that's not going to help. Yeah. It's going to help somebody else, which is what it's all about. But Kelly I'm, has a pair of Christmas shoes for she you. She does. It's her favorite she song. She does. Yeah. Look at her now. She's she so upset. She's like, what? So anyway, if you'd like to make 2022 your best wealth building year yet, shop our one-day deal at our online store at RamseySolutions.com today. All right, let's get to the phones. 888 825 Chicago, Illinois is where we go to talk to Tim. Tim, how can we help? Uh, hey, guys. How are you? We're living the dream, Tim. What's going on with you? <laughs> uh, so... Well, I'd like to purchase a home, another home. Um, I currently own the home that I live in now, and uh, I, I'd like a bigger, nicer place, and I just want to make sure that it's something that's financially responsible for me to do at this time. Okay. It's a little bit complicated because I own a company, um, and and historically I've I've dumped every bit of money I've, I've ever made back into it. So it feels a bit guilty to start taking, taking from it now. <laughs> Wait a uh, second. 
You mean you're talking about you pay yourself a salary, but traditionally beyond the salary, you've never paid yourself anything as the owner. I paid myself dividends, uh, but they've been pretty small. Um, for example, last year I reinvested 309000 of what could have been my personal income back into the company Got it. Uh, just to grow the company debt-free. Did it ROI? Um, it's, it's, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So what's complicated <laughs> um, about this? The amount of money that you would have to give yourself is way higher than you've ever done before, but it would also allow you to build, buy that bigger house in a much better financial play. Is that what's going on? That's right. That's right. Well, what's complicated so, about it? Uh, well, I do have um, I do have some loans through the business, and I, I probably misspoke when I said debt free, but um, mm. I've I've kept the debt to a very minimum. Um, I owe four hundred thousand on a building, a commercial building that I just purchased. Uh, Two hundred twenty thousand um, is in one mortgage, and the rest is in an SBA five hundred four. Um, the two twenty balloons in five years. So I'm I'm a little bit worried. I'd like to get that mortgage paid off before Absolutely. it balloons in yeah. five years. So we pause on the house and get the business get the business healthy and pay it off, man. That that five year clock is ticking. That's why you're nervous. So no on the house right, right now. No, yeah, pay you don't off. need a house. You want one. What is your... Does it make a difference that the the two twenty is not an in, an incredible amount of money for the amount of income that I have? Reverse engineer that question. <laughs> since it's, since you make sure. so much money, just pay it off. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, yeah. right. Well, yeah. So the the company does two point five million. Um, my bottom line is about fifteen percent. So I'm at about three hundred seventy five thousand a year. That's yeah, your, that's, what your, I could that's your salary you pay yourself. Right. Historically, I have not. Okay. Um, but I could. But okay. I could. I have twenty thousand in emergency funds, one hundred and twenty thousand in um, in a savings account that was supposed to go towards a down payment, and then a, another two hundred thousand in liquid capital to run the company. Okay. Um, and then, of course, I do my nineteen five to four hundred one, six thousand to. Uh, IRA. Tim, Tim you're the one that's years. making this complex. This is well, really yeah. simple. We told you what you should do, yeah. and then you asked us another mm -hmm. question. And I think it comes down to um, what is it that you uh, are, are, are leaning on or counting on to not pay this debt off? You're, pay you're just counting on nothing ever going wrong. I mean, you know what? He's right, John. We've not had a pandemic mm -hmm. recently that changed the whole world. Nothing like that happened. No, uh, Tim. Some, I mean, this some... is ludicrous, and you know it's ludicrous. <laughs> but I also know you really, really, really want to buy a house. Yeah. So hear us say, we know that you're probably not going to do what we're suggesting. But what we're suggesting is be debt free in your business in six months or less, and then save, and then go buy a house. Ta-da! And if okay. you have, if you've got reserve capital for your business, and you're running a debt free company, and you've got next year lined up and you want to take a bigger dividend as the CEO and owner of That's your company, right. don't make it an identity statement that I don't ever pay myself anything. That's silly. That's, that's a recipe for mm -hmm. burnout. Choose to, mm -hmm. or it's a recipe for resentment. Mm -hmm. Choose to take care of yourself in a season. I don't have any problem with that at all. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I would sum it up with this. I really want to meet Lover's Pizza sometimes at midnight. It's not a good idea. Since, yeah, don't do that. I know. Yeah. And so he really wants a house and then keep the debt alive <laughs> on his business. Don't do it. That's right. You'll regret it in the morning for sure. <laughs> That's my point. There's just nothing good is going to come out of that situation. That's right. <laughs> and I think sometimes we try to like talk ourselves into, well, what if, what if, what if, what if? So who knows? Uh, let's go to Ken in Columbia, South Carolina next. Ken, how can we help? Hey, how you doing? Um, I uh, am about to uh, celebrate my 15 uh, year anniversary Uh coming up this summer and uh i am trying to decide uh what kind of trip and if i should take a trip uh I'm thinking about new york uh and some other trips and i'm just not sure that um i should put that kind of money into it my wife's uh, a little more conservative than i am uh i'm i, I am i guess I, I would say i'm in the middle um so i'm just trying to ask for some advice on that well well so the budget what's the budget telling you that you guys can actually afford to do uh, I mean, I think yeah. I mean, we're okay on that. I mean, we do. Uh, do you we have retirement? We you have to pay bills. You know, we 
All we know is the cars right now. So I guess the reason I asked you that, Ken, is I want to kind of get you to walk back into this thing. If you guys have a budget and the budget's actually working right. and it's allowing you to move forward and you've budgeted for this trip, a 19th anniversary trip, and you can afford it, well, then do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Am I missing I think, something? Uh, do you, what, what's your debt load? You said you owe on you owe two car payments. Yeah, we owe two car payments. How much oh. do you owe on the car? Uh, we owe we, we owe about thirty together. How much money do you make? What's your annual salary? Uh, together it's uh, right at a hundred. Yeah. So, so uh, can I tell you? Can I be totally transparent with you? you <laughs> yeah. Uh, I has celebrated my nineteenth anniversary last summer. And my wife and I have some financial goals. We're trying to burn through this thing and get my house paid off. So you know what we did for ours? Hang on to your hat, What's brother. That? We went to a KOA in North Carolina. It was a very nice one, though. It was a real nice one, but it was a couple hundred bucks. You know why? Because we want to be out of debt. That was, a, that was the decision that we made. And we don't have any consumer debt. Like, you don't have any car payments like you all do. But that was a choice we made. Yeah. And so we're going to set ourselves up for the 20th this summer. Yeah. Well, rec- let me step you. I did yeah. not catch that. I don't know how I missed it. <laughs> uh, I must not have been listening well, so I need to clarify that. Yeah, yeah you, you don't need to be going on the anniversary trip. You need to get rid of those cars. 20 is a bigger one than 19 anyway. Absolutely. So I wanna, I'd recommend saving that one. So save it. Uh, we're going to work the debt snowball is what we do. That's right. And so it's rice and beans. Let's knock this thing out. Sorry I missed that, pal. I'm glad you clarified KOAs that. are awesome. Dude, campgrounds rock, man. All right, folks. This hour is in the books. I want to thank our producer, James Childs, our associate producer, and Paul Scrinner, Gina, Jenna Sears, rather, and Dr. John Deloney for hanging out with me. But mostly you, America. Thank you. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, guys. This is James, senior producer for The Ramsey Show. Did you know over 18 million people listen to The Ramsey Show every week? And a lot of those people listen on one of our 600-plus radio stations across the country. To find a station near you, head to theramseyshow.com. This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studio, this is The Ramsey Show. It's where America hangs out to have a conversation about life. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by my colleague, Dr. John Deloney. We are here for you this hour. It is a free phone call to jump in. 888-825-5225. What do you want to talk about? What do you need to talk about? Feeling a little bit alone? Feeling like maybe there's not much hope at all? John and I are here to encourage and equip you. We'd love to hear from you today. 888-825-5225. The phone lines are open. Caitlin is going to start us off this hour in Knoxville, Tennessee. Caitlin, how can we help? Hi, Karen. Hi, John. Uh, Thank you so much for taking my call. Um, So I just moved here this year from California. I'm a single mom with two kids. Um, When I moved here, I was able to get a job in the same field that I was working in in California, which was in human services. Um, And when I got to this job, I was really excited about it. And it turned out to be pretty toxic Mm -hmm. environment. Um, the management was not great. The way that they did things was a lot different than what I was used to. Um, and I felt like instead of being able to treat people as people and as humans and families, they kind of were treating them as just numbers. And that wasn't something that I could kind of do. And as I kept going through, um, it just got worse and worse. So I ended up quitting the job and now I am just doing like delivery driving for DoorDash and Instacart and those things. But while it's paying the bills, I'm also in debt and I'm trying to figure out what my next steps would be to kind of get back into like having a career that um, gives me purpose and that is going to glorify the kingdom. Okay, let's uh, let's detail that out. I think you know what it is. 
Uh, was this mm-hmm. social work when you said human services? Was this social work? Was it government or was it uh, nonprofit? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Government work? It was government. Mm-hmm. And um, let's, let's just remove whatever you've done in the past and let's look forward for a second. What's the kind of work that, that would give you that real sense of purpose doing what you know you're born to do? Yeah, so I took your assessment, Ken, um, and basically what that came out to me was everything that I thought I was wanting to do. Good. Um, I have my bachelor's degree in psychology, which is why I'm happy that John's on the phone, too, because I um, have been listening to him as well as you. Um, and I just am trying to figure out, because I, when I was in college getting this degree, I went through a class that are basically like, oh, well, if you stop at bachelor's degree, you can kind of like be a receptionist or, you know, do all these kind of entry-level things, but you're not going to really go anywhere unless you get like a doctorate or um, a PhD, you know, like higher education, which I, as a single mom, like with debt, I'm, it's not really my So let me focus, let me focus you for a second. (laughs) I know that that's a tough journey. John can speak to that uh, very, very specifically. But what I want to do is, is I want to get an understanding of what would you do if there was no debt, if you didn't have to get qualified, who would you want to counsel? Who would you want to serve? Um, I mean, originally, originally when I went to school, I wanted to be a marriage and family counselor. Mm -hmm. Um, but just, I really just want to help. I don't know, because I really, um, I've kind of been all over the place. I've wanted to help veterans. I've wanted to help, um, people with mental issues. I've wanted to help the homeless. Okay, great. Um, I just, all right, great. That's all good news. All right. Here's what I want you to do. All right, and John, I want you to weigh in on this because you're the, the actual psychologist, but from a tactical standpoint, um, I think you're a little bit overwhelmed by all the different possibilities that have popped into your head on who you want to help. But is it true yeah. that you would just want to counsel people? You want to sit knee to knee with them, look at them eyeball to yeah. eyeball and listen and learn and coach them up and counsel them and take them to a place of transformation. Is that true? True. Okay, so that's the what. You're really clear and confident on the what, Correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you know the why, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. So the who and the how, John, I would normally say if you weren't sitting next to me, and I'm deferring here because yeah, yeah. of your expertise and training, but I would say this is the good old-fashioned proximity principle on the starting sentence is just let's hang out with some people. Right who are actually counseling veterans. Some of these names and the types of people and the demographics have popped in her mind. And I would suggest that she either volunteers or tries to you know, get around some of those folks and verify who kind of pulls at her heart the most. What would you say to that? Yeah, I, 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 two things. One, I, I've heard this throughout my entire career. I also taught in graduate programs for mental health professionals. Um, people go back and getting their PhDs and their master's degrees. I hear folks who want to be helpers, and I've heard that th- what you just said, I want to help this group, I don't want to try to help that group, I help that group. Where that falls inside out is people think that when I help the right group, it will be easy. Mm-hmm. It will be a job that I just go home feeling fulfilled all the time, or all the management's all great, and that's simply inaccurate. Helping mm-hmm. any group is hard, and it takes your soul. It's draining. It's challenging. That's why I go spend weekends in the woods. It's just tough, right? And I'm not even doing like a true therapy. I'm talking on the on the stinking radio, man. Not like my buddies who are in the in the trenches here. So, getting understanding that your feelings, this uh, it's just a number. It's just that, man. Some of that is the reality of working with people in these situations. The other thing I would recommend is this: you have boxed yourself into I'm a single mom. I can't do this and that. Yeah. There is some validity to you cannot sit for a licensing exam unless you have a graduate degree. That's the world we're in. So you're in a college town. You could get a job at one of the universities as a receptionist, as a secretary, as an admin, and take advantage of their free tuition program. That's what I did for my second PhD in counseling. A university paid for it because I was a university employee. Let me jump in super fast. Walmart and Target are also offering this. There you go. So, I mean, if you want to get out of a car and be safe in a store, they're offering college tuition as well. John's absolutely right. You can do this, but we got to get you out of debt as well. That's right. So, you know, Mm -hmm. I listen, getting out of debt is your primary goal. The psychology degree and the counseling opportunity and the people you want to help will still be there, but you must get stable first. Do you understand? Yeah. Because it feels overwhelming right now. You go, I know what I want to do, but how in the world am I going to get there? Well, you're going to get there the same way everybody else did, but you got to get out of debt. You're already clear. 
So now we got to get out of yeah. debt. Then we get yeah. qualified. Then we get connected and we get started. And I think spending some time with some other mental health professionals, counselors who specialize, spending time with them, they're also going to give you some wonderful insight into the problems they're solving. And there may be one or more problems or a type of people that you get more excited about helping, whether it's marriage and family or vets or whatever. Right. Here's a secret that I learned. Are you ready? Yeah. One of the best training programs I ever had for working with in mental health uh, in that world was working fast food. Here's why. <laughs> yeah. You learn to talk to everybody. And you get to see mm-hmm. people who are trying to smile through a lot of pain. You get to see people who are just joyful. You get to interact with people. And you get 10 seconds to make somebody's day a little bit brighter or a little bit worse. And I get to choose that. And so mm-hmm. whatever work you do, whatever work you do will be in service to one day you sitting across um, a couch from somebody saying, how can I help? And don't minimize those experiences and interactions. Really good. Thank you for the call, Caitlin. You're going to help a lot of people. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're considering a career in technology, I recommend Bethel Tech, and I'm not alone. Here's what Brendan said. Before Bethel Tech, I was driving Uber. Within four months of graduating, I got a job paying $60,000. About two years after that, I got a remote job that pays me $130,000, all thanks to what I learned at Bethel Tech. You could be next. Get started today at BethelTech.net and get $1,000 to $2,500 off of your tuition. Again, it's BethelTech.net slash Ken Coleman. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by my colleague, Dr. John Deloney. We are here for you this hour. 888-825-5225 is the phone number to jump in. That's 888-825-5225, and the phone lines are open. John, uh, this freaked me out. Christmas is two weeks away. I don't know where the year went. Okay, I mean, it's flying. I, I, it sounds like my dad saying that, but it's really, it's, it's really moving fast, right? And at Ramsey Solutions, we've been in the Christmas frame of mind for a while now. We're having a great time handing out cash as a part of our annual Christmas cash giveaway. Uh, because if you haven't experienced it yet, uh, giving is the most fun you'll ever have with money. Every year we celebrate Christmas with our Ramsey Show listeners with an awesome tradition, the Ramsey Christmas Cash Giveaway. This year we're giving away $500 every week and a grand prize of $5,000. You can enter every day to increase your chances of winning. Enter now at RamseySolutions.com slash giveaway. And... We know you're planning to do some giving. You're looking for Christmas ideas. That's why our team is featuring a new deal every day this week. And today is my day. I, well, that's fun. My How new book. How convenient, Ken. I know. They, they put this in front of me so I'd have to read it. <laughs> I feel like you should have to read it talking about my book. But the latest book, uh, From Paycheck to Purpose, the bestseller, it's now available for just $20. You can get my career assessment along with this for free. So this is the perfect gift for somebody who's not happy in their work or maybe uh, they uh, are looking forward and dreaming and they want to get Get some confirmation. This would be a great gift uh, for the job hunter on your list. So uh, this is your last week to order gifts and get it in time for Christmas. So shop our one-day deal online at RamseySolutions.com. That's RamseySolutions.com. All right, let's go to Tracy in Louisville, Kentucky. Tracy, how can we help? Hey, thank you so much for taking my call. You bet. Um, so my husband is a combat veteran who's been diagnosed with PTSD and schizoaffective disorder. And the longer that he has been out of the service, the more difficult it is for us to communicate and be on the same page, um, especially when it comes to our finances. Um, Hang on a second. Take a breath. 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 
This is heavy. Oh, I'm getting a cardio workout just sitting in my car. My heart's beating so fast. Yeah. Oh, bless your heart. You're good. We're You're here good. with you. Take your time. How long have you been sitting on this diagnosis? Since 2016. Could I say the obvious out loud? It is hard to love somebody and live with somebody with schizoaffective disorder, right? Yeah. And, you've and been, I still love him. Of course you do. You love him to the end of time. But you've been through hell the last few years, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah, it's hard. And he's, he's contemplating divorce. Yeah. Mm. Yep. And there's probably a part of him that deep down in his soul thinks that your life would be better without him. Am I right? Yeah, because he's also very, um, he's almost taken his life twice, too. That's, that's right. Yeah. That feeling of burdensome, of burden. Ugh, I'm sorry. So, so sorry. What a mess. What's his care regimen look like? Um, right now, like, our, um, he's not on medications. We tried that route. And um, the VA just basically threw pills at him, and the side effects were worse off than yeah. dealing with it without medication. Um, he was meeting with our pastor for, for counseling, mm -hmm. and our pastor is not a licensed therapist, but more of like a companion. Yeah. Um, he needs some true trauma he, counseling, and um, he's going to have to get a doctor and a psychiatrist that will walk alongside him. It's not just going to throw pills at him, but this is a tough, tough road to hoe. Is, is he giving up hope? I don't think so. No, okay. he's still here. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Um, yeah, this is, I mean, you know this, and, and this isn't even why you called, but um, this would fall into a, a very limited number of situations in my world that would be a red a red alert situation. I'm going to call, not the VA. I'm going to get the money. I'm going to figure the, the finance part out, but we're going to sit with a psychiatrist who, or a medical doctor that we trust, and it will... Um, that somebody recommends that this will listen to you and we'll start small and build up the right way and get into some trauma counseling ASAP. What I want to tell you is I know folks in that situation and there is help on the other side of it. Um, it feels like um, everybody's drowning on this side of it. I'm so sorry you're going through that. Do you all handle your finances together? Are you the primary person who handles it? What's that look like? So I'm actually a Ramsey preferred coach. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, it's more along the lines of um, I do the budget and include him in it. Um, and he sees money differently than I do because of the near death experiences that he's had. Right. That money to him is just, it's not tied to a tangible future, I guess would be a way of describing it. Like he doesn't view it the same way that I do or somebody with a sound mind does. Right. It's it's just another thing, essentially, is is the way he described it. Well he's he's seen he's got a very tangible he's breathed the air of there's not gonna be a tomorrow. And so it's really easy to fall into since there's not gonna be tomorrow, let's live it up today, let's spend everything, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah. again, whenever you've got a brain that all PTSD is your body responding in the present as though the trauma you experienced in the past is happening now and what mm -hmm. a good trauma counselor do. And by the way, um, there's a number of programs and study. There's so many different routes these days that they didn't have five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. There's some really extraordinary stuff on the horizon, uh, not on the horizon. That's already here. Um, Man, when you get your body to calm down in the present, then the future looks real. And right now, the future is just not real. It's a, it's a myth, right? And you know that. You live mm -hmm. in that. Um, is he accumulating debt or just spending all the money that's coming yeah, in? Yeah, is just a hole in the checkbook? What what's, What is it? Um, so he's accumulating a little bit of debt. Uh, my name's not on any of it except for the house. Um, we have like our our joint savings. He's got his own credit card that he's slowly accumulating debt on, and then. Um, Does he know this is a problem, or is or, or is there a, a philosophical issue here? He knows that it's a problem for me. 
Okay. <laughs> did, would, does he, he knows he, I hate that. <laughs> would he honor you enough to give away the credit card? Like when I work with folks with bipolar, one of the things is you got to put some roadblocks in front of you, right? I know that mm-hmm. things get hard when you're manic or when you're low, but you got to put some roadblocks in front of you. Is he willing to do that or no? No, he's not. Okay. We, we've had that conversation, okay. and um, he's at this time now. Okay. So here's where things get hard, and I want to give you two pieces of wisdom here, okay? Number one, okay. I want you to let the shame that you're a Ramsey preferred coach and you're married to someone who's struggling, let that go. Yeah. You're not failing anybody, okay? You're carrying this thing around that you should be this because you're licensed, I mean, you're certified as that. Man, you are in hell. Both of you are. And it's hard. Okay? We're walking with you. We're not pointing our fingers at you. Okay? Will you release that shame? Just set it down? Yes. Thank you. Okay? And the second thing here is you and you alone need to go see somebody. And I say you alone. Your husband clearly needs to go. But you can't make that. You can't force that. You can't will that. And you got a guy that's... Go ahead. I am seeing our church counselor. I want you to go. Trauma therapist. I want you to go see a trauma therapist. You've been married to somebody with PTSD and schizoaffective disorder, if that's even a true diagnosis, and um, you need to go see somebody because you've had, whether it's secondary trauma or true trauma, you've seen it all and you've experienced it all, and you've woke up in the middle of the night next to somebody who's screaming and who's sweating and who's bleeding. You've been there too. Now, I want you to go see a trauma therapist. Somebody knows what they're doing, who's licensed, and who will walk alongside you. It's not going to be what, as hard as you think it is, but it's something that you got to do for you. Whew, thank you for your service. We love you. We love you. We love you. Yeah. Keep us in the loop. If we can keep walking alongside you, we're here for you. Tracy, don't give up. You have so much value. Don't give up. Do not give up. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're ready to get out there and find a job you love, then you need to hear this. Job hunting can be stressful and time consuming, but my friends at ZipRecruiter have made the whole job search way easier. ZipRecruiter is rated the number one job site in the US by G2 and it's free. So how does it work? First, go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. Then create a free profile and let their technology do the hard work by finding and sending you jobs that are a great fit. And get this, ZipRecruiter pitches your profile to companies whose jobs match your skills and experience. If someone from that company likes your profile, they can personally invite you to apply for the job. So if you're ready for an easier job search, check out ZipRecruiter. Sign up for free right now at ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash Ken. Sign up today absolutely free and let ZipRecruiter work for you. I'm Kit Coleman. I'm joined by Dr. John Deloney this hour as we take your calls about life. 888-825-5225. The number is 888-825-5225. And out in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions, Justin and Taylor, I guess you guys are here to do a debt-free scream? Yep. Yes, sir. All right. Let's go. Let's hear the story. How much debt did you pay off? $89,291. All right. That is awesome. $89,000. And how long did it take you to pay it off? 24 months. 24 months and the range of income? Uh, we started out making 118000 a year. And uh, we f- when we finished, we were making 213000 Whoa! <laughs> and along the way, we started a business that promises to continue to grow that number Come on. in the future. So I'm guessing the business is what gave us the big bump. Uh, well, it was part of it. We both, uh, I had a career change and my wife has, uh, gotten some promotions during that awesome. time. That what do you guys do? 
I'm, I'm in economic development. Okay. And I'm in sales. All right. Very nice. There's well, no congrats. economic development going on in Dallas, Texas right now, so yes. good for you. <laughs> Lots of it. Uh, wow. Yeah. Real slow down there yes. in Dallas right yeah. now. Yeah. That is fantastic. <laughs> All right. So uh, 24 months ago. Uh, well, what was the debt? Let's talk about that. What, what was included in the 89000 I think everything. I mean, mostly student loans. Okay. Yeah. Credit cards. Mm-hmm. Uh, one vehicle. Yeah. And then I thought it would be a great idea to uh, get a 401k loan to roll, roll some of that credit card debt up. Why not? It's all normal. Everything yeah. you just said is very <laughs> normal. Yes. So you guys yeah. were normal. Okay. Great. Very so much so. 24 months ago, you guys start into this journey. What led to this? Well, really, the Lord put us in just a time of transition. Um, I transitioned out of the military. Um, we transitioned from jobs. Um, Justin left coaching. He was a Texas high school football coach. Oh, which clear you, yes. Wait, whoa, you on, left. The, you left the, the mother church, man. He did. <laughs> I, I did. Wow. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. just just noticing just all the transition that the Lord was putting us in, and with that being said, like. I, we got planted into a new church and all I wanted to do was get involved. I was like, okay, I just want to serve. I want to serve. I want to serve. That's my heart. I just want to do that. And so we get into this new church, we get planted and I'm, I'm like, let's jump in, let's go. And Justin, um, he was a little tired, you know, after being a football coach, like you're, it's all the time. And so, um, I started praying, Lord, Lord, please just, you know, convict my husband's heart. I want to, I want to serve. Let's serve together. And so one day he comes to me and he says, you know, I'm feeling convicted about something. And I'm like, yes, okay, Lord, this is it. Like we've, this is what we've been praying for. And he just, he goes, you know, I mean, I think I stopped long enough, like talking to God for to hear him say, I'm feeling convicted about our finances. Hmm. And I was like, okay, it's not, it's not what we talked about, but, um, <laughs> but no, I mean, that's what really kind of opened my eyes that, you know, we were making the, you know, good money, but not, not seeing the fruits of it. Really. Wow. Yeah. I want to say first, thank you for your service to our country. You're a great American. Appreciate that. Thank you. And then I got to say to coach over there, clear eyes, full hearts, can't lose. <laughs> got to get that out before we go any yeah, further. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> wow. So, uh, so you guys say, all right, we're going to, we're going to get after this. Did you take the financial peace university class? I mean, how'd you dive in? So, um, Taylor's dad had given her a copy of the toll money makeover there it is. when she graduated high school. And it was a great paperweight for about 11 years. <laughs> you just burned through that one, huh? Yeah. yeah yes. I, well, you know, I put it, I did it with all college students, or uh, fresh, college freshmen. I'm like, okay, I'm going to put it in a box. I'll come back and get it later. Oh, yeah. sure. And I'm pretty sure at some point uh, her dad saw it at our house and was like, yeah, I gave this to Taylor forever ago. I don't, I don't know if she ever read it. So <laughs> I ended up reading it. And that's about the time I came back to her and said, mm. hey, look, I think, uh, you know, we got to make some changes because I had just left coaching, uh, transitioned in sales and was making more money than I'd ever made. Yeah. She had just gotten a big promotion. She was making more money than she'd ever made. And at the end of the month, we still were just sitting there going, where's all our money going? Yeah. And so it, it really came down to us getting frustrated to the point that we knew a change had to be made. And so we, we, uh, decided to take FPU and, um, you know, after that, the rest is, yeah history that's i don't want to stand in front of a former uh, of a veteran and a, a texas high school football coach <laughs> yeah y'all are gonna point. get crap done in a <laughs> short amount of time <laughs> so what was the hardest sacrifice you made as a couple um i think really so we ended up selling our house um and we moved in with my mom and stepdad <laughs> Whoa. So, so it was close quarter with two children, two dogs. Um, and so y'all were serious, serious. We were yeah. like, let's do this. <laughs> yeah, we. Uh, I basically kind of calculated out like, hey, look, if we if we just, you know, stick our nose to the grindstone, we sell the house in this many months, we'll we'll be able to pay everything off and buy a new house. And so we uh, we did that. We paid everything off and we moved into a new home and uh, it feels a lot better to be in a new home with none of the other stuff mm-hmm. uh, attached to us. That's so. incredible. Wow. So what's the key? What would you tell other couples that are sitting there going, eh, we might do it. We've seen this book uh, up in the, up in the uh, attic a few times. Yeah, I would say um, one, obviously communication, being in alignment. I mean, that's probably first and foremost, but being able to just give it to God. I mean, that was probably one of the biggest things for us is just making sure that we kept him first and foremost, and then our marriage and our kids and everything else and everything lined up just the way we needed it to. Yeah. And I would say just understanding that it's not going to be a perfect journey. You know, like most things in life, it, it, at the end, it looks really perfect, but along the way, there's definitely some conversations where you're like, what are we doing? You know? Well, and how do you, how would you counsel somebody 
I mean, you're a, a former high school football coach. You have to have at least an F-250, if not bigger. <laughs> and you're a veteran, so clearly you got a Jeep that's jacked up out in the parking lot. How do you, how do you make those sacrifices? I mean, you got to have gone to have a, a, a grab a drink with some buddies who are still mm-hmm. coaching, and they're like, you're at your ma- in-law's house? What? Yeah. How, how, how would you tell somebody to work through some of that comparison issues? Yeah, I think, I think you know, comparison is the thief of joy. Like, yeah. you know, it's a, a lot of people will tell you that. But I think the, the number one thing for us was just understanding the, the long-range goals, the dreams. Uh, I think when you're in alignment about what you want the future to look like and, and how you're going to get there, then it makes the each step along the way a lot easier to, it, to, to do together. Oh, man. Well, that's awesome. I yeah. love it. I love it. So who are your biggest cheerleaders along the journey? Well, uh, the group we got over here yeah. with us, obviously, the, the grandparents uh, that gave us the book and then let us crash their pad for nine months. So <laughs> that always helps. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. And the kiddos in the journey as well? Yes. Yeah. So we well, actually had one child throughout the journey. Axe was born, like, yeah. right, I guess, in the middle of it. Yeah. So awesome. that was a pretty cool transition. April 2nd, 2020. So it was a, he was born right in the middle of our, uh, you know, debt-free journey and then right in the middle of uh, – the pandemic starting up so that was uh yeah april 2020 having a baby's not stressful yeah. at all no it was, it was totally fine <laughs> wow. no, we did it like champs <laughs> wow that's awesome wow so fantastic well a couple things we're, we're going to give you guys uh two gifts uh, just to really honor you celebrate you one is a copy of dave's total money makeover that you can give to somebody else and it'll become a, a paperweight for them for a while <laughs> yeah. until they decide to do something with it and then dave's new book baby steps of millionaires comes out in january we're going to give you a pre-release copy of that because that's where you're headed and uh, you guys have got a great future so let's do this let's get the kiddos uh, are they going to join us here for the day de- there they come there's finley right mm-hmm. and then axton yeah. Axton. Axton. yes <laughs> look at but that what, what a great name for a football coach's son come here <laughs> Axton. Yes. that's like perfect i love it all right so have they been practicing um mm. I don't know. Not really. They're really Not good really. at yelling. I mean, he's That's mostly perfect. A, he's half velociraptor. Yeah. It's cool. That's, <laughs> right. That's what we say about John around the office. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah. fun. All right, let's do this. We've got Justin and Taylor Finley and Axton from Dallas, Texas. They paid off eighty nine thousand dollars in twenty four months, making one hundred eighteen thousand to two hundred thirteen thousand dollars. Take it away. Let's hear your debt free screen. Right. Three. Two, one. Praise, Praise God. God, we're, we're debt, debt free. free. Yes. Yeah. All right. <laughs> That's great. Look at that. Axe is like, what, what are we doing here, Dad? I was coloring over there. Yeah. yeah. Right, let me eat my candy cane. Yeah. Oh, it's a candy cane. Is that what you love, Dad? Quit yelling. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic stuff. You know, you'll love it when you see young kids on the debt free screen yeah. stage with their parents because you know they have no stinking nope. clue they're gonna, how awesome their parents are they're, they're gonna be old and say we lived at grandma's house for a while and yeah they're gonna say, yep don't even talk remember about it at all times but yep. oh fun stuff it's amazing. oh that's why we do what we do folks it's worth it you just heard it don't move more of the ramsey show coming up right around the corner Welcome back, America. You are joining the conversation here on The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman. I'm joined in studio by my colleague, Dr. John Deloney. We're here for you, taking your phone calls about your life. 888-825-5225 is the number. That's 888-825-5225. Blinds.com's 100% satisfaction guarantee means even if you mismeasure or pick the wrong color, they will remake your blinds for free. We could call that the Ken Coleman uh, condition because I'm the idiot that would do all of those things, John. That's why that actually exists. That's why they're a great company. I'm another level of idiot. I don't have any blinds. That's the problem. <laughs> I haven't even tried yet. That's how scared right. I am. But yeah. Yeah. So you get free samples, free shipping, and with all the new promos they run every month, you'll save even more. Use the promo code RAMSEY and you will get the best deal. 
Today's question comes from Andrew in Oklahoma. My girlfriend and I met in college and have been dating for four years. I left school for a great job in IT in school. I didn't know what I wanted to do, but realized when I took this job that it is my passion. My girlfriend just started optometry school, which is three hours away, and wants me to move there and get married. I want to get married, but this dream job just fell in my lap, and I'm having a hard time giving it up. I think a long-distance relationship can work, and I'm willing to get married after she finishes school and gets a full-time job. Is it selfish of me to want to keep my job for now? Hey, Doc, I'm going to let you take a <laughs> shot first, and then I'll, I'll swoop in if, uh, if I feel necessary. Necessary. I've got thoughts. I, <sighs> what do you think, relationship I, guru? So I don't think this is a job issue. I think somebody wants to get married now, mm-hmm. and somebody wants to get married later. I well, well diagnosed. And so <laughs> I think there's a relationship that is much more rocky than the previous four years might might let on Mm -hmm. and we've come to a fork in the road i don't recommend dating for seven years three of those being long distance one of you in grad school and one of you working your dream job um this is a conversation that's not it's going to end up being a fight about school or a fight about my dream job that's not it the conversation here is about our relationship that's what i think yeah i i i don't think it's fair and I don't mind you disagreeing with yeah. me on this. I don't think it's fair for her to put that pressure on him to move to where she's going to school, not where she's going to work, but right. where she's going to school. A temporary thing, yeah. Temporary for her to say, hey, I need you to leave this thing that you love. It's a big part of, of what you're doing and who you are now. Right. I just think it's unfair for her to, to ask that. And vice versa, right? She gets into yeah. It's um, not right for him to go. School. No, you can't go. You to forget your dream. Yeah, yeah. I agree with that. My 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 thinking here is, um, man, I've just. Is this the only optometry school that she can go to? We I don't, don't know. I we don't, don't know. have the geography. It, there's not IT jobs somewhere else in the town, right? So yeah, that's where you're going to have this impasse together. If somebody gets into med school, and my first thought is, well, what about me? That's a signal. That you're not on the same page relationally, yeah, yeah. right? Wow. Um, Tough. Yeah. So my wife had a great job and, and that she loved and great community there in Texas. And then when I got this job in Nashville at, at the university, it was, I can't, I can't wait to see what this adventure is going to be, right? And it, was, it would have been the same. If she got some great opportunity tomorrow, then it would be about how can we do this thing together? Not what about, we, what about me? What yeah. about me? Yeah. So, yeah. They got to figure out the together first. Yeah, that's right. Then and then the job stuff the t- tends to take care of itself. Yep. Not like, always, but yep. maybe. Yeah, that's good. All right, let's get back to the phones. 888 Ariana is joining us now in Los Angeles. How can we help? Hey, guys. Thanks so much for taking my call. You bet. Um, I finished grad school at the end of 2019 and um, with about 71,000 in student loans from that degree. And when COVID happened and the interest got paused and payments got paused, I really didn't make any payments, but I've still been saving money. And as of a couple of days ago, I have the money in my account to pay off all, that entire loan. Wow. Good um, for you. What, do what, it. What's your degree in? Thank you. It's in consumer psychology, and I'm kind of doing something related to it. But um, consumer psychology yeah. is depressing, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It is. It's it really is. depressing. Is, uh... What is? Because I think there's other people listening that want to know details. What is consumer psychology? It's one of my favorite. You 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 explain. It. It's one of my favorite things. But you, you explain, it, Ron. You're the you're the expert. Yeah, sure. Well, my degree's in implied psychology, and there was a focus on consumer psychology. So just understanding the motivations of why people make the decisions that they do when they're purchasing. But I'm actually in kind of a, a, a different field, went into something different just because yes, it was depressing and it did not. Uh, <laughs> is it depressing not because, is it depressing because uh, you now see uh, how, pathetic humans are and how easily manipulated <laughs> the, uh, manipulated they are to buy something? There What's going on? There is much, much less free will than we like to walk around believing there is. Uh, that's what I was thinking. And okay. people make decisions based on okay. tribes, not on rational thinking. All right, is that so, fair, Ariana? Did I just describe your graduate degree? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sorry. I, I, I was learning on behalf of the audience. Yeah. So why wouldn't you pay off the student loans now? Because you have the money in full. 
Why wouldn't you do it? Right. I'm pretty confident that I'm going to do that. Um, I've just been getting a lot of conflicting advice from my parents and financial planners that Uh-oh. are kind of advising to buy a home instead or of invest course. it instead. Um, just because they know I have that money right now. Um, because they're okay with again, debt. I'm, Can I talk to a real psychologist right. for a second? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> so you know one of the core tenants of psychology, one of the core tenets of a person being physiologically and psychologically well is this idea of autonomy. I have some say, however limited that might be, I have some limited control in what my tomorrow might look like. And I have come to believe that when you are in debt to somebody else, to an institution, to a group, to a a vehicle, loan, whatever that may be, that you limit your autonomy for tomorrow. And I've come to believe that you cannot be psychologically whole if you owe somebody else something, if somebody else is dictating your tomorrow actions because of something you bought yesterday. Mm -hmm. Is that fair? Yeah. And I, agree, I yeah. think having a home is so incredible. Oh, it's so cool having your own place. But if you pay this off, you will wake up tomorrow and go, you know what I can do? Anything I want because I owe nobody. <laughs> That's right. And you will get an awesome home. But yeah, now with a whole will. lot less stress and you're going to be wealthy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stop <laughs> listening to other people. What advice would you give? You're, this is fun. I got two psychologists in here. What advice? No, she's would, a real one. I'm a pretend one. I, I'm a podcast host. That is she's true. a real psychologist. Well, I was trying to be nice to you. Okay, that's fair. So <laughs> what would you, Ariana, what would you say to you? Seriously, step out of this um, situation. What advice would you give you? You want to pay this off. That's what you said. And you're getting conflicting advice, meaning opposite of what you want to do. Parents and some goofball financial advisor who's an idiot is telling you something different. What would you tell yourself? Um, to trust my gut here and what I'm hearing right now, definitely. Solve um, for freedom. You yeah. will wake up tomorrow free. Free. And Gosh, I wish you could well, do it right now. Can we pay it off while you're on the air? We got a minute and a half. Is it all set up? Well, I guess fun. I guess that's my my next question. Would I? Would you guys advise I just empty my account? Uh, yeah, I think you're saying that the wrong way. Would we advise <laughs> that you pay all the student loan off right, right now? Well, because you have yes. all of the money to do it. Yes, we would. If that's the question, okay. yes. And it will take you. Okay, you're right. It'll take you three months four months to have a fully funded emergency fund and then you think you know what freedom is until you have no payments and a fully funded emergency fund and that's when the call is going to come to say hey can you move to this state for this particular job and you're going to be able to laugh and go yeah i'll be there tomorrow because that's right and and i love that you said that doc because ariana the next thing is you begin to focus on what is it that you really want to do with your life in every area because relationally you're, you're completely unchained professionally Financially, you're you're free. John's exactly right. What are you waiting on? I'm hanging up on you right now. <laughs> you're done. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I didn't actually hang up on her. We put her on hold. We never hang up on anybody unless you're a jerk. But here's the deal. It's time. We just set one do more it. person free, Ken Coleman. Well, we didn't do it. I she know. did. I'm She's take credit amazing. for her hard work. But. Ariana, set yourself free. Like right now. Like go do it right now. What are you waiting on? Hey, I want to thank our producer, James Childs. Uh, our associate producer, call screener, Jenna Sears. I want to thank my pal, John Deloney, and you, America. You're listening to The Ramsey Show. Hey, it's Kelly, associate producer and phone screener for The Ramsey Show. If you would like to do your debt-free screen live on the show, make sure you visit theramseyshow.com and register. We would love for you to come to Nashville and tell Dave your story. character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studio, this is the Ramsey Show. It's where America hangs out to have a conversation about your life. I'm Ken Coleman. I'm joined this hour in studio by my colleague, Dr. John Deloney, and we are here for you 
The phone number is 888-825-5225, 888-825-5225. Let's get to it from the Big Apple, New York City. Andrew is on the line. Andrew, how can we help? Hey, guys. How's it going? Uh, we're living the dream. What can we do for you? Uh, basically, so right now I'm working in an accounts payable job, uh, making around 52000 a year. Um, 25 I have a degree in business administration, um, but I'm really unhappy in the position, and I kind of dread going to work every day. Mm-hmm. Uh, I dislike sitting in the office, um, and there's not a lot, a whole lot of room for growth mm-hmm. uh, other than pay. I get uh, a two, two raises a year of $2 each per raise. Um, and the company right now I work for is an HVAC and refrigeration service company. Wait a minute. You and get a raise big... twice a year of $2? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, so far, yeah. That's that's what my boss told me. Like, usually every six months I can expect a raise of $2. For the oh, $2 per an hour. hour. Yeah. Gosh, I thought yeah. it was annualized. Wow. I was like, well, you got, that's true. I was generosity. wondering where you were going with the questioning. Oh, sorry, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah per, okay. per hour, yeah. All right. Andrew, okay, so, give him just a minute. It takes about five minutes was, for the meds to kick in I for him. So not he's catching up. He'll be there in just a minute. I'll get there. All right. Okay. All right. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, this is a dead end for you. Yeah, this is a dead end. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit, a little bit. Um, and it, the company I work for, it's an HVAC and refrigeration company. Yeah. And I've been thinking about transitioning into a role as a mechanic in the field. Oh. Um, because I, I talked to the supervisor and he said, uh, once I get my EPA certification, I'd be good to go. Um, but in the beginning, I would be taking a pay cut uh, to around $20 an hour. But the mechanics get a raise of six raises per year of one dollar per hour usually. All right, so we got a lot raise. of we got a lot of money flying around. Uh, forgive me for my yeah. ADHD. So you are making uh, how much per hour right now? Twenty five. Twenty five, and you'll drop to twenty uh, for a short amount of time. Yeah, yeah. Basically, I'd be back up to twenty five within about within about a year. I'd be back up to making 25 and probably a little bit more. All right, so to um, me, to me it's not a money issue. Mm-hmm. This is a meaning issue, right? Yeah. Uh, you started off the call going, "Man, I don't even want to go into the office." And the reason is cuz you don't love the work, that's passion, and the results of your work, it, it, well, while they're valuable, they just don't move you. Am I right? Yeah. All yeah, right. So then I got to yeah. ask, I want to put that same classification on getting out there as a mechanic. Will you really enjoy fixing stuff? Uh, do you get fired up uh, seeing problems solved? Are you are you a guy who's motivated by solution? Yeah, yeah. Because I was um, right after college, I was working just cutting grass at a golf course, and just the idea of being outside and seeing a finished product was more satisfying than you know inputting invoices all day. Yeah. So I think yeah. I think I would, yeah. Well, and how much of this do you, you have a business degree? How much of this you're having to swallow some uh, I went and got a four-year business degree and I'm going to end up working alongside guys who just went straight to trade school. How yeah. much of that how much of that shame are you carrying around? Yeah, there's a little bit of that. Yeah, brother, oh, let that go. Yeah. Hey, I got a bunch of doctorate degrees. Ken doesn't. Same job. Yeah. Get yeah. over it. Yeah, cool, I do. Man. I do want to point out I have no degree at all. So I, <laughs> I, 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 I mean, I think that's kind of fun. But I will say this, John. I'm glad you pointed this out. There's a lot of sunk cost shame out there. There is. And you just nailed it with Andrew. Andrew, did you hear what John said? Yeah. There's mm-hmm. no shame in your game, man. No, you man. didn't waste a bunch of time and money. I think that's what you think or people think. But it's, no, here's the deal. You're actually figuring this out. How, you learned. How young are you? I'm, yeah, I'm 25 right now. Come on, you man. You haven't started yet, brother. Yeah, I, I love this. Okay, so here's the only other thing I'd say. I'd say this feels like an absolute uh, get after it, uh, but just because I love clarifying and verifying, I'd love for you, and you may have already done this, um, have you spent some time with any of the techs that are that are doing what you're doing now? The guys that are that are uh, mechanics. Have you spent any time with them to say, hey, give me a quick, uh, give me a quick high low, uh, the ins and outs of what you do? Have you spent any time with them on that? Yeah, I, I talk to one mechanic basically every day. He's kind of encouraging me to do it because he kind of knows that I'm unhappy. Uh, and it's, I mean, there's good benefits. The the job is in the union after a while. Yeah, but I'm not hearing um, you know, anything about the work itself. Do you feel confident that you got all your questions answered as it relates to, am I going to enjoy this? Yeah, I think I would. I, I, I think I would, definitely. All right. Well, I, I call it a soul tax. When you stay mm, in a job that you don't like that's good. because it's $2 an hour more or whatever, it's costing you somewhere, right? It's costing you somewhere. And I'll also say this. A plumber came to my house today 
with their gadgets to unclog my you can help families you uh, help families. That dude is more important to Sheila than you are. Let's be no honest. No question. Okay, you want some? You want to find meaning in your work? Co- be a plumber. Be an electrician. You know what my wife be an can HVAC do today? repair. They don't love us. She can go to the bathroom on the inside of the house today. <laughs> it's incredible. <laughs> that's because fantastic. A plumber showed up to my house and to help my family right. out. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah, watch watch the AC go out at the Coleman house in the mid of July. Yep. And the guy shows up and does an incredible job. Yeah, he's a little sweaty, he's a little dirty. Stacy don't care. No, in my little the, She's like, uh, my we don't skill even... set, my little pep talks, they don't make the house cooler. Oh, I promise you. I can't coach an HVAC system to work. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you that right now. Yeah. Oh, man. I love it. All right, let's go. Oh, look at let's just stay here, shall All we? Right. Well, we don't know what borough Andrew is in, and we don't know what borough Jeff is in, but they're both in New York City. Let's see if we can do this. Jeff, you are on the Ramsey show. How can we help? How are you guys? Thank you for taking my call. You bet. We got about two minutes. Let's see if we can help you. What's up? I am calling about um, home purchasing. Okay. So right now I'm 35 years old, um, family man, wife, three kids, and I'm looking for some advice on home purchasing my first home. Um, currently, I make about 95k a year. Um, my only debt right now is a car loan for about 19,000, and no other debt. Okay. Do you have any savings at all? Uh, currently right now, by the end of this year, I'll have about 75 K saved. 75,000 saved? Yes. Okay. Are you familiar with our baby steps? Uh, not so much, but a little bit. All right, John, you want to walk you through it? Yeah. Well, so you want to first, before you buy a house, before you get any, add any sort of risk to your life, I want you to pay off all of your consumer debt. So I want you to keep, well, actually, you don't even have to do that. I want you to write a check for that $19,000 car today yep. and be debt-free today. How much cash do you have right now in the bank? Right now, 68. All right. So okay. at the end of this call, you're going to have $49,000. You're yeah. going to be 100% debt free. And then you're going to save up three to six months of an emergency fund. That's three to six months of your expenses. Things go up or to go down. You're going to buy a new house. The air conditioner is going to break. The roof's going to cave, whatever. You're going to save up three to six months of emergency fund. And then you're going to save 10 to 20% down on your home. And your home is not going to be more than one fourth of your take home income. And if you meet those numbers, you're in. Stay on the line. We're going to send you a copy of the Total Money Makeover that's going to walk you through this. Jenna's going to get that for you. That's going to be our gift to you as you start this new journey. But brother, you're debt free in about 13 minutes. I want you to get online and pay this thing off. Yeah, try to beat the 13 minute deadline. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're not using Pure Talk for your wireless, you're paying too much. Pure Talk gives you the same great 5G coverage on the same 5G network as one of the big guys for half the cost. The average family saves over $800 a year. Go to puretalk.com and choose the affordable plan that's right for you. With their 30-day risk-free guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Go to puretalk.com and enter the promo code RAMSEY to save 50% off your first month. You are listening to The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman. Dr. John Deloney joining me this hour. Thrilled to have you with us. It is a free phone call if you want to jump in. 888-825-5225. If you've had it with living paycheck to paycheck and you're sick and tired of constantly worrying about money, you don't have to live like that anymore. No matter how you've managed money in the past or how much debt you have, you can take control of your money. You just need a plan. And the right plan is Financial Peace University. It's helped almost 6 million people take control of their money one step at a time. You'll learn how to make a budget that actually works, pay off your debt, spend and save wisely, and invest for your future. These numbers blow me away every time I see them. 
The average family in Financial Peace University pays off $5,300 in debt and saves $2,700 in their first 90 days of the class. We'll walk you through the plan, but it's up to you to step into it and get started. Decide today. Financial Peace University is only available through a Ramsey Plus membership. Get started today or gift it to someone you know by visiting RamseySolutions.com slash FPU. That's RamseySolutions.com slash FPU. Tracy joins us now in Cincinnati, Ohio. Tracy, how can we help? Hello. Thank you for taking my call. You bet. Um, my boyfriend um, was laid off in July of this year. He's um, 65, so he was going Hey, Tracy, uh, hey, Tracy, talk directly into the phone so we yeah. can hear you. There you go. Okay. Um, so he was going to try and retire. Um, he He's a union welder. Um, he was going to try and retire. He has found out that he does not like retirement. Um, he did start receiving his um, Social Security. Um, our problem is he still wants to work. But we don't know how he's going to work and receive his Social Security, how much money he can make, um, how we're going to do all this. Okay. Why don't you have the answers to these problems? I mean, what, what, what's the source of this? You're not doing your homework? I mean, what, what, what's going on there? Well, I mean, we hear, um, somebody tells him he can only make $18,000 a year. Um, we make very, very good money. Um, he actually went back to work last this week. Yeah, he doesn't um, need to be drawing from Social Security. That's the right. So, dude, if we and then he was told, do we stop that? Are we going to get penalized if we stop his Social Security? Uh, I, I got to tell you, off the top of my head, I don't know if stopping receiving the payments creates a penalty. I don't think it does. I don't think it does, but here's the deal. This is a phone call to the Social Security Administration, and you could get this figured out. I mean, th- th- that's what you need to do. I wouldn't just operate in okay. ambiguity here. But the real big issue is, the more important issue, you can get an answer to that. Okay, so go get an answer to it okay. and, and, and then stop it. But he doesn't need to be drawing from it. He loves to work. He wants to work. You guys make really great money. Uh, so I would double check on all of that. You know, does he can he draw from it and still work all the nine yards? I I'm not the expert on that, but this is not hard for you to find out. This is just you know making a one phone call, uh, maybe even getting online with the Social Security Administration and and checking into that. But um, he just needs to be staying active. He needs to be working. So that's yeah. the better financial move for him and for you guys. Uh, Tracy, I recommend okay. if you're even considering retirement, even whether it's a one year, two years, five. Years, have y'all sat down with a smart investor pro to sit down and look at your numbers to see can is it even a viable option here? No, I, he has because um, like I said, we're we're, we're not married yet, sure. so um, he has absolutely no debt. I'm paying off mine right now. Okay. So um, okay. that's all in the works. Um, but I mean, he's got all because he's he's a um, he's an everyday millionaire. Okay. Um, so, um, so he's like Dave. He's got all- he likes working. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. Tell him to stop we, drawing we Social Security and st- keep working. Okay, so I uh, here's the deal. I'm on the Social Security uh, Administration website. If you change your mind about starting your benefits, you can cancel your application for up to 12 months. How long has he been receiving the payments? Just for a couple months now. It's, it's not been long. Yeah, there is no penalty on that. So you, you, can, you can do that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, good stuff. But here's the deal. Uh, I want to be very clear. I mean, I'm glad you keep those finances separate. They're not married. That's right, right. And so, you know, you got to do what's best for you, and he's got to do what's best for him financially. Uh, I I appreciate the call on his behalf. But, yeah, go ahead and pause that um, right now. And I do like the idea, of course, getting with a smart investor pro to go, okay, once I reach the age of 70, uh, you know, and what's this all going to look like? Mm -hmm. How would I invest that and and everything else? It's good to have a really good plan. And for those of you getting up to 62, 65, 68, 71, you don't have to retire. So many people get there and say, well, I guess I'm here. I guess I should just have to quit. I like working. I like going in. I like accomplishing things. I like serving people. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Yeah. I've got no intention of just stopping. 
I, I, I don't know. I like working, man. I like my life. I like my job. Yeah, I, you know, I think there's something to, you know, the idea of staying active, not just mentally active, but staying active Physically, emotionally. Yeah. Because you know how I Stay think about work. Stay connected to a purpose, yeah. Yeah, if you're doing work that you really enjoy, that's creating a result, that's touching the lives of some people, and you go, it doesn't even matter if you need the money anymore, but staying active, it's, it, it, it's reframing work, and all of a sudden it's contribution. Right. What contribution do you want to make at 65? Right. And you get paid for it? I'm Game in. on. I love that. Let's go to Madison, Wisconsin next. Matt is on the line there. Matt, how can we help? Hi, guys. Thanks. Um, I'm looking at, I'm trying to prioritize a work-life balance with a significant increase in, in pay and benefits. Mm-hmm. Um, my current situation, I'm 32. My wife's 31. We currently make 156 between the two of us. Um, I could look at doubling my salary and take us to about 198 mm-hmm. if I took another position with better retirement plan, stuff like that. The issue is the hours, quite terrible hours, honestly. Okay. But it's not so much that I would have to do that long term. It'd be for a few years until I got um, my rental properties paid off. I could grind it out for four or five years, do that, and then look, look at something with a better balance. So how do I? I don't want to. Let me let me so, let me jump in. We got about two minutes. I okay. want John to jump in on this one. Obviously, um, I'd like to simplify these questions. Okay. Um, so you're only considering this because of the bump getting you to a place of paying off your rentals. So it's a part of your debt-free journey. That's the only reason you're even considering this, correct? Well, not necessarily. I have, I have a lot of intrinsic rewards at the position I have now. Right. But my boss is tough to deal with. Ah, so that's a piece yeah. of information we didn't have. So the next question I have is, this this sucks on the outset. If we forget the salary for a moment. The way you described this, these hours are going to be pretty darn awful. Your words, I believe. Correct? Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, I mean, is it worth dealing with awful for two years? To well to pay off the debt and escape your boss, or could you consider uh, a, another side hustle or another job where you make a little bit of a bump and you and you wait a little longer? I, I just wonder what the sacrifice is worth. John, your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I've seen, I, I've made that sacrifice, and we went into it with a short, knowing this is going to be a short season, this is going to be hard, and it's always ten x harder than you think. But you can do it yep. for a short season. That's right. Four or five years seems. Well, that's a long I, time. I can get. If I double my salary, I can pay off my properties in four years. Okay. What I'm currently at would be five years. So that's that's the time savings I'm looking for. How many properties you got? Five. Okay. What what you've boxed yourself into an either or. What if you sold one of them or two of them, and you had three paid they off are. properties in two years? And well, then you've got your my marriage. Wife and I talked about that, but they all make good money. All right, here's so the hard. deal. Yeah, it's hard, but you're, you're going to pay a tax either way. You're going to pay a tax on your soul. You're going to pay a tax on your marriage. Divorce court's real expensive. Uh, uh, I, or have three paid for houses. Can we at least look for another job that doesn't have sucky hours yeah, that can make you more money? I just think we're looking at, well, I'm in a current situation. I got all these good things. My boss is a jerk. I got this new thing. Double my salary. Allow me to pay off my rental property. But it's going to be awful for my life. And we're not looking at a third option, which is. Well, the third option is sell the rental property. Well, well sure. Okay. Money, but, uh, Fourth option. Yeah. Fourth option, go get a really good job with not sucky hours. It pays you more money. So you got to look at all of it. All right, tough stuff, but you can make the decision. This is The Ramsey Show.
Welcome back to the Ramsey Show, America. Thrilled to have you with us. I'm Kid Coleman, joined by my colleague, Dr. John Deloney. We're here taking your calls, 888-825-5225. And it's always fun when we look across the lobby there on the debt-free stage. We see Shanique and Harold. Hi. Welcome. Hey. Hi. Hi. Thank you so much for having us We're here. thrilled you're here. Where are you from? Well, we're. I'm originally from Florida. I'm I from had, Louisiana. Well, okay. we moved here. Well, we... We came here from Atlanta. We live in Atlanta right now. Where in Atlanta? We're in Sugar Hill. Come on. Yeah. yeah. Right next door to Sewanee. Yes. Yeah. Where yes. the Coleman's live for 11 years. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so I, I read feel, that in your book. Yeah. Come on. All right. I feel like these are my neighbors, John. Yes. Okay. They well, are that's... way better looking. You lived in their neighborhood, I think. They're way better looking than you. John, I was aware oh, no. of this. Did you have to point I'm that out to everybody out. else? For those I mean, of you not listening, not watching. Yeah, it's a fantastic looking couple. Well, that's Thank fantastic. You. Great, great, great. So you're up here to do a debt-free screen? We are. All right, let's go we through are. the numbers. Here we okay. go. How much did you pay off? We paid off $175,000. Whoa. Yes, How yes. long did that take? It took us two and a half years to do it. Wow. Yeah. That's getting with that's it. That's still smoking. That's, oh, that's a lot of money. Yeah. Wow. Her- yes, it is. Herculean. Yeah. I'm definitely. surprised you both are standing. <laughs> I, yeah. 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 All right. We'll get into that. All right. And then uh, range of income during that time. Well, I would say it was like 97 to 160000 Great. What do you guys do for a living? I'm a doctor of audiology. And I'm a graphic designer. I uh, work at CNN. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, great. That's wow. fantastic. I love it. Doctor of Audiology. Yes. Specializing in hearing issues? Yes, hearing okay. imbalance. You got yeah. it. Yeah, okay. Yep. Great, 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 great. All right. Okay, so real quick, oh. I keep hearing that because we all walk around with ear pods shoved in our, our heads, <laughs> that we're starting to hear a little bit worse and worse and worse. Is that as, as, a, as a culture? Right? What did you yeah. say? <laughs> exactly. Just turn it down just a little. You should okay, be fine. Okay, hold on. Hold on one second. Look at that. We're I got to tell you. Medical I, advice. James, I can't go forward until I feel like she's a little loud in my ear and I'm feeling convicted about it. All right. Now, okay, Doc, we're good. Okay. All right. So uh, what happened two and a half years ago where you guys said, we're getting rid of this debt? Well, I would say it started with a car loan that, um, well, our car loans that we had, and um, I was making the usual payments and that it just felt as though we weren't getting anywhere. Mm -hmm. And once I logged in um, to that lender, I noticed that really most of the payments were going to interest. And that just... It bothered me so much. So mm-hmm. I just, I told my husband like, hey, we, I just can't do, we can't do this. We need to just figure something out. So somehow I came across Dave's videos and I guess you can say we were gazelle intense wow. ever since. What else exactly. was in the 175? Some loans, student loans, I'm guessing? Student loans. Yeah, majority student loans. Majority student loans yeah. and in a yeah. car. Yeah, two cars. Yeah. yeah. So you're very normal. Very normal. Yeah. 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 No big normal. deal. Everybody's doing that. Yes. Yes. Wow. Yes. Very interesting. Yeah. yeah. So who who sat down at the table and had the conversation with who? Um, pretty much. Um, <laughs> she pretty much led majority of it. Um, I can tell by the look she gave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I would say yeah. It was definitely me, but I couldn't do it without my husband. Yeah. So it. it How did you receive it, Harold, when she brought this to you? Um, I pretty much I was I was down for it the whole time. I, um, I've always been a person who always been like I guess tight pockets in a sense. But um, but when she came to me, um, she kind of had a plan and a kind of a step by step plan when she started watching you guys, and I was down for it the whole time. Yep, I love absolutely. it. So what what kept y'all going for mm. for? Two and a half years. That's a that's a long time. Like yeah, the gazelle stuff. The 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 yeah, let's do it. That wears off in a month or two. Oh yeah. And then Very you're like, soon. whoa, now we're in it. Sooner than that. Um, but <laughs> um, but for the most part, we just kept going. We didn't necessarily like our family and our friends. They knew about it, um, but they didn't necessarily get it. So yes. I would say like our biggest support was from you guys, like the mm. Dave Ramsey community. Just social media youtube and things like that um although we didn't have that those one-on-one conversations just being a part of the facebook group yeah. you know that goes a long way it's just to bounce community. information yes so yes. so how, how much grief did you take i mean you're rolling into cnn and you you're driving the old car, and you're driving up, you know, your doc. <laughs> oh, she's the good doctor. And, yeah. like, hey, that, that's that's the car that a doctor drives? You yeah. bring in your lunch to work, doc? Like, yeah. Like, how did y'all navigate the, the comparison challenges? Uh. Well, I guess, like, with us, 
I guess the results start coming in, and you kind of see what happened throughout the time period. You see, like, your debt is being knocked down. Uh-huh. So, like, when you're looking at, you know, uh, the income, like, I guess the actual debt going away, you kind of get, you know, motivated more and more each time. It's like we're almost here. We got, like, you know, a year left, you know, some months left, and you finally get to that point. Like, so yeah. you just so you by watching the the debt get paid off, those loud voices just get quieter and quieter. Yeah, and quieter. much yeah. quieter. We and, didn't and, even we no longer cared about what people had to say. Like, oh, you guys are so cheap or so yeah, frugal. Yeah, people it was like, said that. Well, that's okay. We we have a fully funded emergency fund. Yes, like, we can give and help that's others. Awesome. Like we yeah. are comfortable where we are. That's so, yeah. so good. Wow. So I'm looking at to get after it, people. Yeah. It's just obvious. Yes. You yeah. said we went gazelle. I want people to hear what did that look like for you guys? How intense? What did you do? What was some of the crazy, just like, you're a maniac, get oh after it. You gosh. got something for us? Um, We stuck to our budget, and when it comes to, you might think this is crazy, but for the two and a half years that we were on the plan um, leading up to paying off all of our debt, um, we only spent like $120 on groceries every single what? month. Okay, break that for down. For a household. Look at this guy. This is an athlete. Yes. He looks like one. <laughs> what? How do you feed that man on $120 a month? What were you feeding him? We shop sales. Um, like I always pull out the circular. I look it up. I wow. buy things based off sales. I buy in bulk. I have a deep freezer. Stop we it, meal stop prep. You're, you're, you're using... Uh, yeah. What were you eating? You were intentional? <laughs> Say what? You mean you planned your life? Intentional is the word yeah. for sure. You have to be disciplined and intentional. Yeah. Did, for sure. I just need to know. I pe- the American people are waiting to hear. Was it rice and beans or something else? You know, rice it and beans. It was, but beans, it was other things. Um, uh, vegetables. Yeah, <laughs> okay. for a minute we gave okay. away meat. Like for a minute we stopped eating meat. I mean, we're eating chicken and things like that now. Right, but right, for right. a while okay. we, we didn't. We That's didn't. serious business. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Yes. definitely. That is not messing yeah. around. And some no. coupons as well. Yes. Yeah, that too. So you made it, uh, your, your side hustle was cutting the grocery costs. Yeah. Absolutely. Cutting any cost that we could. That's so, incredible. yeah. yeah. Good yeah. for you. Wow. Yeah. See, yeah. I love that. I do yeah. too. I love it. I love the intensity. <laughs> okay. Yeah. A lot of people listen to you. Okay. What would you say? Each of you can take a stab at this. What would you say is the key to making it through this two and a half years of intensity? I would say just remembering your why and not allowing outside influences to get into or to um, disturb or impede what the things that you're trying to do. So yeah. just keep going and don't allow, allow anyone to influence Love you no it. matter what. Head down. Yes. Love it. Absolutely. What do you got for us, Harold? Um, I would say um, leaning on each other. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like we've uh, grown a, a stronger bond together That's through this good. journey, depending on each other, and I uh, learned to trust each other. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely, you know, uh, following her, letting her lead this, and you know, walking with each other. And you know, we also like, you know, depending on as far as ideas, what can we do as far as like money wise. So I would definitely say lean on each other. Yeah, I love it. And God as well. Absolutely. Well, I got to tell you, we got a couple things for you here. Uh, to to kind of reward you and honor you, uh, one is Dave's Total Money Makeover book for you to give to somebody else okay, that yes. you believe needs it. And then we're going to give you an advanced copy of Dave's new book, first book he's written in eight years, Baby Steps of Millionaires, because that's who you are going to be Yay, very, very so soon. Awesome. So we're going to give you that. And then uh, we also want to bring Champ in, the coolest name. Yes. I wish my name was Champ Coleman. Hi, and this Tim. is Champ. How old is Champ? Champ is 19 months. He's wow. 19 months. Yes. Look at that stud. Look at that guy. Hello, he has no <laughs> idea how awesome his parents are, but we all do. So here we go. You guys ready to do your thing? We are. All right. So we've got Shanique, uh, Harold, and Champ from Sugar Hill, Georgia. i got to throw that in there. Uh, they paid off uh, $175,000 in debt in two and a half years, making ninety-seven dollars to $160,000. Take it away. It's time for your debt-free screen. Ready to count? Yeah. Three, two, one. We're We're debt debt free! Yeah! Yeah. Yes, you are. I love it. (laughs) It's awesome. Champ kept the uh, passy in the whole time. Champ's like, whoa! He's a champ. You're free, brother. You're free. You are free. That is so great. What an awesome story. What an awesome family. That's what peace looks and sounds like right there, folks. Don't move. More of the Ramsey Show coming right up.
This is The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman. I'm joined by my colleague and uh, Ramsey personality, Dr. John Deloney. Thrilled to have you with us. 888-825-5225 is the number to jump in. Today's scripture, James 5, 16. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Our quote today from John Wesley. Oh, this is one of my favorites, John. Do all the good you can by all the means you can in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as you ever can. Only a, only a, only a Methodist preacher like John Wesley and writer can say it that powerfully, that effectively. So I love it. I mean, that just, that's pretty much, you want to know life. why you're on the planet? That's your life right there. That's purpose. That's it. I Do love Do that. It. And, and, and the rest takes care of itself. Life is going to be really Really, really special. Mm. Good stuff there. All right, let's uh, stay right here in our backyard, Nashville, Tennessee. Annie is here. Annie, how can we help? Hi, thank you guys so much for uh, taking my call. You bet. Um, so, so my husband and I, I'm 24, he's 25. We have no debt. We have a fully funded emergency fund, and we are saving up to buy our first house. Um, we both have awesome sets of parents who paid for our college and gave us cars and wow. just want to say they did awesome. So it really does work. <laughs> um, but now we're kind of in the market for a car. My husband's car is not the best. Um, what is it? He, what kind of car? It's a, it's an 08 Hyundai Azera. Nice. How many miles? And it's got 175,000 miles on okay. it. Okay. So, which isn't horrible. Like we were planning on driving it till we, like I had to go pick him up on the side of the road or something. But um, <laughs> okay, we can get it. We can pay to get it fixed. It's going to cost about two thousand dollars. But we thought, why don't we just keep saving up money? We're we're I, like I said, we're saving up for a house. So we, I mean, we have some cash. We can pay for a car. But we've just been like doing research about getting a car, and the market is you know, off the chain right now. But we just wanted to know why you guys teach we should pay ourselves first, like keep paying monthly like we're paying a car payment and then pay in cash, whereas we've also seen people say, like, um, get the loan, but then pay it off as soon as you can because that's the car dealer will give you the best deal if you don't say you're going to pay in cash. and no. Or we were just wondering why you teach. Because. Pay- for it fully in cash because uh, the the philosophy behind this is because most people and I forget what the new number is but it used to be about four hundred fifty dollars a month it may be as high as five six hundred dollars a month is the average car payment and you're and you're paying that on a depreciating asset so you buy it for one price which by the way you're gonna buy you're gonna pay premium for a used car right now right. even from a dealer it's gonna be it's premium you're paying you're overpaying right now and if you don't pay mm-hmm. cash so you're, now you're carrying around those payments. Okay, so let's just use round numbers. Okay, and, and let's say you got a five hundred dollar a month car payment, and you're paying interest on that. Okay, so that's five hundred plus, and it's a higher interest rate. All right, and so you're you're that car, you're driving around, and it's going down in value, Every down week in it's value, worth less money, less money, and and you're still under pressure to pay off that debt, as opposed to if you spend two thousand right now to fix the Hyundai, and you keep saving up, and let's say you paid yourself. $500 a month towards a car replacement, all right? Let's say that becomes one of your line items. It should be. You guys have no debt. And so, or maybe you remove some of that money from the house payment. You get a really nice, dependable car. And then after we get the nice, dependable car, that's going to be less in mechanical cost. Obviously, then we go back into saving for the house. There's no viable reason. It's horrible. It's a bad decision to have a car payment because you're paying more Every every month, then you should be paying, and it's depreciating in value. And so let me tell you this: just down the street from you, I I went and bought a new car, not a new car, but a used, a new to me car, um, maybe a month ago now. I just did as well. And I went over to a dealership here in Nashville, and I wrote a check for it, and then I went home, and I don't have to worry about what's this thing worth, and is it losing value in it. They don't care. I just shook the person's hand and said, I'll give you this yeah. for that. And they, they did give me a runaround because like, well, if you finance it, you can say they did because that's where they're going to make their money. Yep. And I said, man, look, I'm going to write you a check. Let's 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 walk out. And what I'll tell you is I haven't thought about it twice since because we saved that money up and there's no pressure. There's no worry. There's no whatever. What's going to happen is you're going to say to yourself, we'll just pay it off as fast as we can. 
and then the air conditioner is going to break, mm-hmm. or then your car is going to have an issue, or you're going to find the greatest deal on the one and only home that's available ever in the world, ever, ever, and then you're going to find yourself in a mess. So I would rather see you drive. <laughs> I bought that new car from my wife. My car is an 08. No, it's an 06. It's an 06. It's older than yours. Same amount of miles, and it's just putting along just fine. And that, that's my recommendation until you've got the money, pay for your house and um, pay for these cars cash. Yeah. You guys have to just determine what's the greater priority, yeah. the down payment on the home or having a car that's not going to be a nuisance to you. And this car is getting into nuisance territory. Yeah. Now, there's a reason it can't go for another 75,000 miles. And by the way, Annie, remind you what you said at the start of the call. Our plan was is to drive it until I had to pick him up on the side of the road. Now you're faced with a $2,000 repair, and you're going, well, maybe we'll take on some debt. Well, so here's Whoa. what happens. So when you go look for a home, like here's our price range. Let's make up a number. Let's say it's 300000 And the realtor says, well, let me show you this one. It's four fifty, but let me show it to you. And they show you that one, and then every house you look at after that is ruined. Yeah. Because it's not that. Mm-hmm. Same as we're just going to drive this to the wheel falls off. We don't look at other cars. We don't even think about other cars. And then you think, well, before we get it fixed, let's, let's look at these other cars. Yeah, you, you hop over to to a website and start looking at cars. And you're like, uh, oh. and now your car suddenly looks oh, yeah. awful, oh, yeah. and you hate your life. It's and true. It's, I'd go get it fixed and keep driving it. That's what I would do, because it, it sounds like the house is more of a desire. Right. So drive the Hyundai a little bit longer. That's right. Two grand for Shake a car off, repair, Shake please. You guys are debt free. You're cool. Come Shake on. it off. Yeah. I think you now should actually, I think I'm going to hold you to your words. Drive this thing until it literally dies on the side of the road. Then you go by. And in fact, I want you to drive out here next week to the Ramsey Solutions building and me and Ken will take a photo with this Hyundai. It's fantastic. John says he'll lay on the hood. <laughs> he'll, he'll, he'll lay on the hood of the car with a Christmas wreath. It's going to be fantastic. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Let's go to Maria in Anchorage, Alaska. Maria, how can we help? Hi. Um, well, I'm looking for some uh, support and, and guidance. Okay. Um, I Right now, I'm a stay-at-home mom. Mm-hmm. I was a CMA, a certified medical assistant, mm-hmm. and I am looking to change my career. Um, I am looking into nursing. Um, I had been wanting to do this for the past 10 years, and I've been to school, so I have some credits. But um, along the way, I've had many things happen and, like, getting bad grades. So now I guess I don't have the confidence, and that's what I'm calling. You don't have confidence to be a nurse, to to step forward? Um, I I feel like I don't have the confidence to go through through it, like through through the program. Like I sometimes I I don't have self um, discipline, so okay. I feel like it's going to be hard for me, and that's something that I'm learning about myself. Uh, Why do you choose to not have self discipline? Because it's a choice. Why I, do you choose that? I I don't know. I want you to hear me say these words. I want you to <laughs> tattoo them on your soul. You are worth mm-hmm. discipline. Mm-hmm. And if you okay. will, if you will choose discipline, even when it's hard, especially when you don't feel like it, you will open up everything because nobody else is disciplined. Nobody else gets up and works out when it's cold outside. Nobody else studies exactly when the right. TV's on. It's it is wide open for anybody in this country who wants to step into the to the and walk the steps of being a disciplined life. It's a choice. Yep. it's a choice. Maria, and you're worth it. You said you want to change. How bad do you want it? Tell me. Um, quickly. How bad do you want? Really bad. It? Pretty bad. I want it bad. All right, then. So you know what the this issue is? John's right. Nobody wakes up on their own because they're thrilled at 5 a.m. to work out. They want to get in shape, and they got to remind themselves at 5 a.m. why they want it. That gets them out of bed. I think that's got to be your focus, your desired future. You better keep your eyes on that. The discipline will show up. Hey, I want to thank my colleague, Dr. John Deloney. I want to thank our producer, James Childs, our associate producer and call screener, Jenna Sears, and you, America. Thank you for listening. This is The Ramsey Show. 
have a friend or family member that needs a daily dose of Ramsey advice in their life? Let them know about the Ramsey Call of the Day podcast. It's a quick hit of advice about life and money in under 10 minutes. Check out the Ramsey Call of the Day podcast wherever you listen to podcasts.